Murray. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, for holding this hearing. Thank you. It's good to see all of you again. And Dr. Walensky, my condolences to you and all the CDC family as well for yesterday. Uh, Ms. O'Connell, I, I want to start with you. I am working to reintroduce my Public Health Infrastructure Safe Lives Act to help provide state and local health departments with the strong sustained funding that they really need because we know how critical it is to have well-funded, strong health departments responding to any public health situation. I have heard from my constituents in Washington State about how federal resources have helped during floods and wildfires and, of course, COVID, but states and communities still often lack the funding and the flexibility they need when they face a public health threat, especially when it comes to reaching and supporting people with circumstances that put them more at risk, and we saw this during COVID. What can Congress do to help ensure that we strategically support those most at risk in a public health emergency, including people with disabilities, older people, adult uh, children, um, families? Senator Murray, thank you so much for that question. This is top of mind for us, too. We just released an ASPERA strategic plan, a five-year plan, in which we make very clear that the country is not prepared until we are all prepared. All communities, those at greatest risk, need to be accounted for in all the planning that we do and the response that we do. Uh, as part of the FY24 budget, there's an authority to start a human services response fund, which would uh, quickly move money into various communities to be sure that we have boots on the ground able to respond to the various populations that are most at risk. I had a wonderful conversation on Tuesday with the head of our ACL and, uh, about how important this is. So we've been in communications within the department about making sure that the human services side of our, of our shop is also prepared and ready to respond to account for these at-risk populations. And then, Senator, you recall as part of the last PAPA, uh, we authorized, you authorized um, three advisory committees, one for uh, disasters in seniors, one for disasters in people with disabilities, and one for disasters in children. And we have been meeting regularly with those experts and have really valued their input. Uh, so we continue to keep this work front of mind. Okay, good. And um, as you know, with any emergency, we need to be able to get supplies where they are needed most in a quick and effective and equitable manner. Um, my Prevent Pandemics Act, Act, which was signed into law last year, includes directives to ASPR uh, to assist state and local health departments in accessing the strategic national stockpile. Can you just give us a quick update on how ASPR is implementing that provision? Thank you. Um, the strategic national stockpile, making sure that it's square, that it's fully stocked and ready to go, has been one of the big focuses of my tenure in this role. Uh, so this is an important question for us. We appreciated the provisions in the prevents bill, and we're working very carefully against them. We just released our 60-day guidance, which is guidance for states and localities on how they might access the strategic national stockpile. We continue to give technical assistance to those states that are interested in maintaining their own stockpile. What do they need to have and how do they need to switch it out? And then we're looking at all the various um, innovations for how we might uh, hold our stockpile uh, with vendor managed inventory and other uh, ways to switch in and switch out what we have. So this is all front of mind for us. Thank you for those provisions and we'll continue to keep you and your team updated as we implement Very them. Very good, I appreciate that. And Dr. Walensky, one of the things we really saw in COVID was that we needed accurate data. You can't get ahead of an emergency and create a response to it if you don't have that. Um, I, I wanted to ask you today, can you talk about ways that your agency is working to improve data collection? Yeah, maybe I'll break this into two parts. One is we are actively working on our data monetization efforts, and that is that our data highways are interoperable, that counties and local health departments can give data swiftly to us on similar highways, and we can offer it straight back to them so they can see what, not only what is happening in their county, but in counties around them. Um, that have yielded huge, huge returns. So before the pandemic started, we had an 187 health facilities that were doing electronic um, case reporting. We're now at 25,000. That's about 20% of what we need across the country. So massive strides happening. I would also in um, syndromic surveillance from our emergency departments and vital statistics from our uh, death registries, all of this work is ongoing in our data highways. Where we could really use your help is um, the structure of those data is coming into us. We receive those data volunteers 
voluntarily. If those data don't come to us, we don't have line of sight and we can't deliver those data back. So that is among the things that we are asking for in, um, in this PAPA reauthorization. Thank you. Okay, very good. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.